So welcome back to the kitchen guys. Today I'm going to be making two different dishes that are very commonly eaten in Gibraltar. They are usually eaten at lunchtime, they're taken to the beach, it's things that are you know traditionally eaten with the family at parties. They're very quick easy recipes. One of the dishes I'm going to make today is a tota serga. This is usually consumed during a Semana Santa, you know Easter week. It's a very traditional dish which everyone enjoys especially as it's so easy to eat and it's so nice to eat cold or hot. It's very nice to take to the beach and it's lovely to just consume all year long really. The next dish I'm going to make is tota patata. For the tota patata today, I'm going to be using sweet potato. The sweet potato I find is healthier, it's better for you, and I like that sweetness that it gives out. We're going to start out with the tota serga today. So first thing we need to do is uh, prepare all our dishes. So we need some spinach, cheese, we need the eggs, a little bit of breadcrumbs, garlic and make sure that you have puff pastry, at least 500 grams to begin with. Maybe have a little bit extra on the side in case you need to just to make sure to cover your pie at the end. Let's begin with our spinach. So we'll bring our spinach out. We need a big bowl and the first thing we're going to do is uh, break it all up into little chunks. So we'll just you can chop it, there's no real right way or wrong way of doing this, so just chop it, break it up into smaller pieces, because we don't need them so big, and uh, just leave it all in the bowl. So just cut it all up like this. We want to break down, break down the spinach uh, into smaller chunks, because what we're going to do afterwards is boil it. We're going to boil the spinach with hot water and leave it to one side uh, with a bit of salt. And whilst we do that, we'll chop the garlic. So first, let's break this down. So we're gonna pour some hot water in to your bowl with the spinach. Careful not to burn yourself. Pour it all in there. and Cover your spinach up entirely with hot water. And uh, leave this to one side and start with your garlic. So now that the spinach is covered in water and left to one side, just so they can stew a bit in the hot water, we're gonna chop up the garlic nice and finely. This will mix into the, uh, with the spinach in the pie and give a nice strong taste. What we don't want is to overpower it. So I use about three garlic cloves and that, for me that's enough. If you want more garlic, it's up to you. You can add a bit more. If you want less, just add two. That should be fine. And uh, just chop it up nice and small. The smaller you make it, it's better because it'll mix up in the pie and just spread out nicely with every, you know, throughout the whole pie. And, that way it doesn't all sink to the bottom. And there's a bit of garlic all over the place. After letting your spinach sit for a while, drain it of water, making sure you squeeze it all out. You don't want any excess water in your pie. So now it's all drained and all laid out in your bowl. Just add in the garlic. So pour in the garlic with your spinach. Add in about 300 grams, 380 grams of cheese how cheesy you want it, to stir it all up in there and mix it all in, try not to make a mess. Add a pinch of salt with your mixture and now we'll add some eggs. So first we need to beat the eggs. Break two eggs in a bowl, try not to get any shell in there and put this to one side. Crack some eggs and now beat it all up. Once it's all nice and liquid and beaten, just add this to your bowl here. Just pour it all in there with a spoon, just stir it all up. Now if you find that if you've used less spinach or less cheese and you find that it's a bit too watery, or maybe you've got, you haven't squeezed the, enough water out of there, just add in a little bit of a breadcrumbs in there. You don't have to, but I like to do it because sometimes I find that when you're cooking, the spinach releases quite a bit of water. Not too much, but a handful or just a few fingers full of uh, breadcrumbs and just pour it in there. Just mix it all up. Put this to one side for the moment. So the next thing we need to do, once you've done your mixture and put it to one side, is get a little bit of flour and just disperse this on your table uh, because what we're going to do next is roll out the dough. So this is going to be the fun messy bit and I like fun messy things so we'll put this on the table there. 
we need about at least a block of 500 grams of puff pastry and then just roll it out thinly. And what we want to do is to try and get it the size of our dish, which is going to be about this size dish. You can use a bit smaller. Try and keep uh, the dish to about a medium size oven dish. And if you find it starting to stick, just move your flour around, put it back there and just carry on rolling. Okay, that needs a bit more rolling, so we'll just roll this out a bit further. Don't roll it too thin, because we still want it to puff, but try and get enough so that you can get a lid for your pie and the inside. And this should be enough for the top and for the inside. So, so before we do that, what we want to do is get a bit of flour and just rub it at the bottom and on the sides so that your uh, pastry doesn't stick to the bottom of the dish. Okay, put it over. Put it in your dish. Feel around inside and make sure that you have enough space to then put the lid over it. So once you've pushed this down to the corners, get your mixture and pour it straight into the dish. What we'll do now is just push it down and make two little coves in the sides and we're going to crack two eggs in there. And these will sort of hard boil in there whilst your pie is cooking. Done that, cover up your pie like this, folding the pieces and the flaps together, all the sides so that you seal everything in there. And what we want to do is maybe with some milk, some water, or if you have a bit of egg left, just brush it over the top and place this in the oven. Up the top so that it doesn't burn and it keeps it nice and moist. And it also helps for you to blend everything and seal everything that you folded in. Place this in the oven and after about an hour, an hour or so, just make sure to check that it's all nice and puffed and the pastry's cooked, you'll have a perfect Gibraltarian dish.